Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So in the last episode, if you remember, I talked about the price rules um, and how it can impact the prices, right? Um, so, I mean, that's that was pretty simple, right? I mean, you have an account and based on account type, you specify, you know, a price of a product, right? Now, imagine you have a different, um, you know, types of accounts, right? And you want to give... Uh, uh, the different price to the same product. Now, that might sounds like a easy thing. You can say, hey, I can create a, a new price rule, right? What's a big deal? Like I've done here, the education price here. You know, similarly, I can create, you know, for, uh, you know, different industry code. So what's a big deal? Well, the problem is that, right? Um, imagine you have well, tons of it, right? And you have a product with different, you know, different codes, you wanted to give, you know, different codes pricing for uh, based on industry type, just for the sake of argument. So the price rules can get very complicated and it will be an admin nightmare. And trust me, admins hate doing data entry stuff, right? It's just like a nightmare for them. They prefer to have something uh, in place, which is simple and easy to implement and is future proof, right? So, um, Salesforce, when you install the CPQ, right, there is something uh, that comes along with it. There's a custom object called uh, industry prices. So it's pretty simple, right? What industry prices will do, um, it will, it contains a few fields, okay? Uh, it contains fields like, uh, you know, industry price name, uh, industry type for, you know, uh, product, what product do you want to uh, associate this with? And if it's a, you know, what kind of category is it and the price, okay? So that's pretty simple uh, in a custom object. And you can use this custom object as a lookup uh, when you do a price rules, that, which is exactly what we're going to do today, okay? Uh, so what I've done, right, just to make it simple, um, I've created, I mean, this is pretty much a trailer example. So I created two entries here. Uh, the first one says, okay, so the same Chromebook, if you remember the Chromebook, which we uh, created last time, right? And I've used the same uh, Chromebook uh, for uh, education sector. So I'm going to use the same Chromebook for health and education. Because I've created this entry to say, hey, I want this IP industry to be education. Uh, the product will be Chromebook, uh, PSLA, IPSLA, uh, bronze, and the, and the price, okay? Uh, the same thing I did for uh, the health. So healthcare. So I said, okay, I want the price of the same Chromebook to be 50, 250. And for if you are coming from education, it should be 230, right? Discount. Okay. So now how are we going to build the price rule? Okay. That's pretty simple. Uh, you go here. The first thing first, right? Uh, you need to, if you, uh, what I'll do, I will deactivate the existing price rule so that, you know, it doesn't interfere. Uh, and then I go back to the price rule, create new. Okay. So I will say, you know, combined, whatever, right? Com industry combined. Ugh. Industry combined price rule. Okay. Uh, evaluation scope, I will say calculator. I'm not interested in the product. So the only thing you have to pay attention here is the, okay, first of all, you need to make active, right? Obviously, the lookup object. So which object are you going to look, uh, you're going to use the lookup uh, relationship. So you have to use the lookup relationship industry price, which I've already demonstrated. So I'll say yes. Okay, now what I'll do, uh, we don't want to work for the price condition, right? That's something we did in the last episode, like if then. So instead, we're going to work with the lookup price uh, lookup queries okay so you got new uh, and what I'll say match type I will say field value uh, tester object I will say code uh, target field I say okay I wanted to say industry what I'm doing I'm gonna match uh, the code industry field with the custom object uh, um, industry field yeah so I will say uh, equals okay and also the lookup field should be your industry okay and then now what I want is that I want to match obviously the product as well right just having industry is not enough so I'll do match field value I will say test object 
for the code line obviously the first thing what we did is pretty much the same like what we did in the last time right so first we match with industry that's use the code because that's a code level then uh, i'm matching the product based on the code line so i will say this product code um uh, matches equals um I think this one, right? Okay, so that's done. So this is like a price condition. So instead, we use the lookup. Now, what should happen if this thing matches, right? Obviously, you have to set the price. So what I'll do, I will say target object. Um, I will say code line, and I will say this <coughs> special price. Okay, and then I'll say, okay, set it to <coughs> IP price. Okay, so what I want to do, I wanted to bring the price from the custom object. Okay, instead of using the price from the product. So that's exactly what I said. This is the target object, and I'm saying, hey, set the price from here. That's all you have to do. And then, you know, I've activated it, and I made sure that I've deactivated uh, the previous uh, existing education price, right? Okay, now let's go to the code, and I'll create a new code. So let's start with the uh, education industry. Um, so... All right, so I'll choose this primary uh, account. I'll choose the school account, right? Which is my um, uh, education account. Then um, I'll choose edit lines and I'll choose a Chromebook, okay? So it should show something like, um, uh, it doesn't matter, um, like 230 something, right? Because the actual price uh, from the price book is actually four and a box as you can see here But behind the scene it does the calculation using a price rule and Idly speaking it should show for uh, okay, so that means it didn't work. Okay, that's fine uh, Now why it didn't work? Okay, so you might get the scenario uh, You know when you say hey, I just did this, but why it's not working? Okay, let's go back to the the price rule to see the mistake what we did Okay, something we might have missed it. Okay, so let's look at the pricing rule. So what I did, let's look at this one. So I said the product should match. Okay, here. Okay, the mistake, you can see that here. See, we have chosen, so the mistake what I've done, right? I've done in the price action. So instead of choosing the list price, um, I've selected uh, the special price. Obviously it won't work, right? This is the one way you can troubleshoot, right? If things go wrong, you come back to the price rule to see what's happening, right? Okay, so we go back to the codes again. And uh, let's see if this is a code we created. Okay, this is cool account, so I'll do edit lines. <laughs> And uh, and I'll do add product, and I'll say Chromebook, and I will select. Right. It should work. Okay, two thirty, right? It worked. All right. Now we're gonna do the same for a healthcare account. All right. So what I'll do, I'll go back to the codes again, and I'll go to this code. Right, and I'll choose this, uh, change this account to test account, which is my uh, healthcare account. Okay, so, and I'm gonna go to edit lines. <clears throat> so when you are coming from a healthcare account, the price of the same Chromebook is should be 250. So you go to add product, I'll choose Chromebook. Right, and I'll choose a Chromebook here. And also select. It should work. So 250, right? So you can see the difference, right? So uh, this is pretty powerful uh, when you have different scenarios. You wanted to give different price based on the industry type, or for that matter, any other fields, right? You custom field, what you, what, whichever you create. So uh, give a try. I mean, you know, look up. Uh, like I said, I mean, if you have a very basic requirement and you believe that, you know. Uh, your requirement won't change then 
go with the normal one, right? The one which I demonstrated in the previous episode. If you have a fancy requirement or the complex requirement where you need to create, uh, where you believe that you might end up in creating a lot of price rules, then I believe this option is a better way to go forward. Just try with the lookup, try build a custom object just to see how it goes, right? So it's a case by case based on your business business requirement. So that's pretty much uh, I would like to cover in today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, just do let me know, right? Uh, so that being said, you guys have an amazing uh, Thursday. Adios.